sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end. you but I feel an awesome presence of the Lord in this place tonight oh he's worthy he's worthy let's pray Father we love you tonight And as I stand behind this sacred desk, Lord, I'm just in awe of your wonderful presence that you've brought us this far. And I know that you'll not forsake us now, but God, you'll carry us on out to the time that you come to get us. Father, I believe that we're 
in the home stretch. We're in turn four at Talladega. We're just about going home. And I thank you for that. And Father, I pray now as we look to your precious word that you'll give me the word that I can share what you want us to hear tonight. And we'll give you praise and glory and honor for it. And everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. God is still blessing, moving, touching, saving, delivering, setting free. Somebody say amen. amen. We had just about depleted our funds for the jail ministry and we took four prison packages up there last night and the Lord had already begun moving because yesterday afternoon Brother Jamie called Joyce and said there's a check down here for the jail ministry and it was exactly what we spent for those packages. Amen? So that lets me know that God's not through yet. Hallelujah. And I told those guys, I said, as long as the funds come in, if you need help, we're going to help you. It's unfortunate that they get themselves in a situation that they have to go to a place like that. But I don't want them to go thinking that the world and everybody in it is against them because they've already got enough tragedy in their lives. Some of you have been there. Some of you know. But I want to encourage and uplift people and let them know Jesus loves them and he cares for them. You say, Brother Mike, why do you have such a a burden because I know what God can do as I've said many times my very best friend in this whole world society has looked on him as not fit to live not fit to even breathe but I know God <laughs> changed his life and the only reason that he is alive tonight is through the grace of God and I asked him one time I said David I said how did you escape the death penalty with all that that you did he said, Brother Mike, he said, it was by the grace of God that they didn't have the death penalty at that time. That's the only reason that I can stand here now or sit here and tell people about Jesus. And as I've said many times, I believe this with all of my heart, through his testimony and through the words that God has blessed him to be able to write and pen and Keep a journal. That journal is in the form of a book, most, a lot of it, from years behind, back. And through that and his testimony and what is going on now, I believe I can say without reservation that through all of that, he has won more people to the Lord Jesus Christ than a lot of preachers have in churches. And for that I praise God. And I don't know why such an infamous serial killer 
that was known all over the United States, especially in the five boroughs of New York, way back in the 70s. Why? When he got saved that God orchestrated it for an old country man like myself could get to know him. And I believe it was because God had something in store for me. Fast forward till now that I had a jail ministry and God wanted me to see that no matter what people had done, no matter what they've gone through, that he can still use them and save them. Praise God. But God has got a plan and a purpose for every person. I believe that with all of my heart. Every person on the face of this planet, if they would just submit to him. But unfortunately, a lot of people's not going to do that. A lot of people's not going to listen to the words of the Lord. And that's what I want to talk about tonight is the words. Words are powerful things. Everybody is looking for a word. A good word. If you don't believe it, you go before the judge and him tell you that you can go free. That's a powerful word. You see, a lot of times he's got people's futures in his hands simply through the words that he speaks. In John chapter 1, beginning with verse number 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Talking about Jesus. Jesus is the Word. All things were made through Him and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. You looking for a word tonight? Get to know Jesus. He'll be the only word that you'll ever need no matter what you face in life. Matthew 4, 4, you, in Matthew chapter 4, you know the story about how that Jesus fasted for 40 days and nights just before he began his public ministry and the devil came to him when he finished his fast and he tempted him at his weakest point. How many knows tonight the devil is going to tempt us at our weakest point? But Jesus, when the devil said, why don't you cause these stones to become bread? I know you're hungry. But Jesus looked at the devil in verse number 4 and he said, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's where his strength came from. And as our example tonight, we can take notice to what he was doing. He is our example and we need to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You want to live a victorious life? You want to get out of your mess? Get to know the word. Because the word will set you free. He didn't have to argue the point with the devil. He didn't have to try to convince him he said it's already written I don't have to argue it I don't have to debate it 
It's there. It's written down. And it'll last throughout eternity. The word of God is powerful. Matthew 8, 8. Said the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. How many knows that just a word from God will change your atmosphere, will change everything about you? Just one word. I could preach from now till daylight, but I could never do for you what Jesus can do by saying one word to change your situation. Matthew 24, 35, he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. When Jesus said it, you can bank on it. It's going to happen if it hasn't already. There used to be a, a commercial that said when E.F. Hutton speaks, people listen. You remember that? When Jesus speaks, we ought to be listening because he's got words that E.F. Hutton couldn't imagine to help us with. John 6, 68 Jesus had said some powerful things and a lot of people couldn't stand it and they walked away. You see, a, a lot of people want to preach a candy Jesus. They want to be a part of a bless me club. I'll serve Jesus long as it's pie in the sky. But Jesus said some words that a lot of people got offended over and people are getting offended over it now because it goes against the grain, so to speak. And he told them, but Simon Peter, John 6, 68, Simon Peter answered him, said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Everybody's left. And Jesus said, are you going with them? Simon Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so thankful that Jesus thought enough of me to speak to me and I listened. I said he spoke and I listened and I'm so thankful that I did he said in John 15 7 he said if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you I want you to notice what he's saying here People said, well, I've asked for things and he didn't give them to me. But what is the requirement? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. You see, when you fall in love with Jesus... He will give you the desires of your heart because your desires will start turning into what He wants and what He likes. Your desires will change when you really fall in love with Jesus. Your desires will become His desires and then you can ask and He will do it. He goes on to say in John 15 
for my words, for who, whoever is ashamed of me. I don't think you got that one. I think it's the next verse. But he said, whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels. If you're ashamed of God and you're ashamed of Jesus, he's going to be ashamed of you. I don't know about you, but when I stand before him on judgment day, I don't want him to look at me and say, depart from me, I never knew you because you were ashamed to tell people that I existed, that I was the one that could save them. As I've said a thousand times, if I have to have a t-shirt that says I'm a Christian, in order for my testimony to go out, there's something wrong with my testimony. We need to tell somebody about Jesus. Hallelujah. Paul is exhorting and telling the Ephesians that you need to put on the whole armor of God because you've got an enemy that's out to steal, kill, and destroy you. We still have that enemy tonight. And we still need to put on that armor. And if we go to Ephesians chapter 6, we can find that what the armor consisted of. But I especially want to focus in on verse 16 and 17. Paul says, Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The devil is going to come and he's going to try to steal everything that you've ever got. He's even going to try to kill you. And the armor, if you'll notice, every part of that armor is for defense. He's going to come and attack us. The only weapon that we've got that we can go on the offensive with is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. If you don't know the Word, you're defeated already. Because that is your offensive weapon that you can come and you can declare that the devil is a liar and say the Bible said that if I submit myself to God and resist you you foul ugly spirit you've got to flee from me you've got no if ands and buts about it you've got to obey the word of God that's why there's so many people living a defeated life tonight is because they haven't got in the Word and they don't know who they are in Christ Jesus. We are the head and not the tail. We are the victor and not the victim. We are the one that overcomes if we'll trust in Him and learn His Word to use it on the offensive against the enemy. Hallelujah. Words are powerful. I remember as a child, we had a saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. What a lie. What a lie. Words will hurt people. Words will destroy lives. Words will destroy homes and marriages. The wrong word in the wrong environment will destroy another person. That's why we've got to be careful. James said this little thing, this little member called the tongue is an unruly evil and full of deadly poison and no man can tame it. 
We need Jesus in our lives. We need the sanctification of the Holy Spirit to help us to put this under control. Oh, we brag and say, Lord, oh, Jesus. And Brother Mike, we've, I haven't hurt anybody. I haven't never killed anybody. Well, bless your heart. You had not never talked about anybody either, have you? You had not never said anything negative about anybody, have you? Did you know that could be considered as murder? Thou shalt not murder. Be careful what you say about somebody. It could come back to haunt you. So yes, words can hurt somebody. Be careful. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is living and powerful. Did you realize that the word of God, this book is alive, this book is real, this book can change your very life if you'll consume this book. He said, Brother Mike, I can't understand it. That's the biggest cop out I've ever heard. Because the Holy Spirit from God moved on about 40 different men to write the precious words of this page, the pages of this book. And it takes that same precious Holy Spirit working in our lives to understand what they wrote down. If you get full of the Spirit of God and ask Him to help you and open your spiritual eyes, you'll learn what He's saying and you'll understand it. That's why the world, they look at it, (laughs) but they don't have a clue what's really in there. I remember I read a tract one time that talked about the diary of a Bible. He said, well, the preacher, that's back when preachers visited homes. Well, the preacher came over today and they pulled me out of the bookshelf and put me on the coffee table. They they brushed off the dust from my cover so that I could shine in front of the preacher. Not one time did this diary talk about people opening this book and reading it? See, we put on a show. We want to impress people. But we don't really get to the Word of God. That's where our strength lies. For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Brother, I want you to know when the word of God gets into your heart, it's going to pull all of the things that you've hid in the darkness to the light. Any time that you walk into a dark room and you flip on the light switch, what happens to the darkness? It flees. When you get the Word of God in your heart and in your life, the darkness will leave. The negativity will leave. And you'll start realizing that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You'll start realizing that you are a son or a daughter of the Most High God, that you do have royalty in your veins and in your blood, that you do not have to live a defeated life any longer. Somebody say, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Paul knew that his time on this earth was just about over with. And he was handing off the reins to young Timothy. 
sort of like Nick Saban is about to do. He's going to retire. Already said he's retiring. I didn't know it till I got here tonight. But he's going to hand off the responsibility to somebody new. And I don't believe he'll hand it off to a novice, somebody that doesn't know the sport of football. He'll hand it off to somebody that can take the program and run with it. So Paul knew that his time was about up. He realized that Nero was about to take, sever his head from the rest of his body. He was in prison. But he wanted to encourage young Timothy to keep this thing going. And thank God that he did. So the way we can enjoy the words of this book tonight. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning with verse 2, Paul writes to Timothy and says, Preach the word. My, my, my. Oh, but Brother Mike, if I preach what's in this book, people won't like it. I've got to tickle their ears. I've got to entice them to come to church and pat them on the back and tell them everything's all right, even though they may be dying and going to a devil's hell. That's the society we've come to know and be a part of. But I want to tell the world right now, and anybody that wants to listen, as long as there's breath in my body, I will not tickle your ears. I will not pat you on the back and tell you everything's all right when it's not. When you need to repent and come and let Jesus cleanse you with his precious blood. It's not a popular message. But I've come too far. I'm too late in the ball game now to change. I'm about to go home not in not too many years from now. I might go this year. I don't know. Jesus could come. And I've got to do what he told me to do, and that's to preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Why? Because for the time will come when they, who is they? The church. The time will come, and we're in that time, brothers and sisters. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the ter- truth and be turned aside to fables. He said, Timothy, there's going to come a time I won't be around, but I want you to understand that I have seen it in the spiritual future. There's going to come a day when they will not Endure sound doctrine, but you shouldn't let that offend you. You shouldn't let that be in, let intimidate you, but you simply still preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Exhort, rebuke, and correct them because the time is coming that they're not going to listen. They'll want teachers and preachers that'll tickle their ears. That'll pat them on the back and tell them, hey, you're okay. I'm okay, you're okay. You're living your best life now. You go tell that to those people that are in Africa and those third world countries that are having to eat rice every day. Are they living their best life now? Some of you have literally crawled through hell itself to get where you're at was you living your best life 
He said, come out from among the world. Be separate. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And give you something that you've never had before. And I guarantee you, it'll make you act better and do better and feel better than any syringe you've ever stuck in your arm. Or any bottle you've ever turned up your lips. So many people want to be entertained. They want to be in a bless me club. They don't want the truth. Don't tell me, Brother Mike, that just because I, I'm old fashioned, but just because I'm shacking up and I won't get married, don't tell me I'm living in sin. I don't want to hear it. But Jesus said that you'll take that wife, take that husband and you'll marry that person. And though those two shall become one flesh and no man can divide it or cut it asunder. That's the way Jesus wants us to live. You see, when you take a mate, it's not like trying on a pair of shoes. Well, if it feels good, I'll buy them. But if it don't feel too good, I'll just, after the night, I'll go back to the store and put them back. That's not the way that relationships are supposed to be. So men, don't you let these pretty ladies over here turn your head. You seek God. You get the word in you and God will send you exactly who that you need to be with at the proper time. Amen. And the same goes for you ladies. You don't have to write little I love you notes and slip them to these men because that's not the way that God wants it to happen. God said, seek ye first, Matthew 6.33, that's not up there, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. Amen? Be careful how we use words. As I've said before, words can make you or they can break you. And I'm going to give you two more and I'm closing. Matthew 12, 36. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. Oh, Brother Mike, I... I heard a joke, it's a little it's a little off color, but I've got to share it. He said, every idle word, be careful what you let come out of these lips. Sometimes I'm sorry is not good enough. Because once the words are out there. Yeah, I'm preaching to Brother Mike when I'm saying this. But once the words go out, you can't go back and snatch them and bring them back. Uh, we heard you, Sister Joyce. Amen. We're all guilty. Somebody say amen. amen. If you're guilty of saying things that you didn't mean and didn't mean to, to say, say amen. We've all done it. So we've got to learn to watch our words. They're powerful. Every idle word, we're going to give an account for it. Be careful. 
So when you get frustrated and you want to lash out at somebody and the staff around here, be careful. Be careful. Because you're going to give an account for that. You need to get it under the blood and you need to get full of this book so those things won't come. Somebody said, well, Brother Mike, I just can't quit cussing. Get full of the Holy Ghost and I guarantee you can zip it up. Last one, Matthew 12, 37. For by your words you'll be, you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. Remember I told you in the beginning when you stand before that judge you're listening and you're anticipating freedom. You can go free. The debt has been paid. You can go free. How many times have we felt relief when the judge says those words? So is it going to be on the day of judgment? Your words will either justify you or they will condemn you. Words are powerful things. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight and we thank you for what you've done here tonight, Lord, that you have allowed us to understand that words are powerful things and that we must know the true, the eternal word in order to make it through. And Father, I pray that you'll help us all to be ready when you call us home. And we'll give you praise and glory and honor for it in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. God bless y'all tonight.